renovated retirement with charlie Jude. oh no i think i'm about to have another episode it's beginning to look a lot like correction stocks are going down Hey, 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 guys, Charlie Jewett here with episode 120. This one is on how to win at investing. Now, Charlie, how often do we want to win? We want to win every time. How do you win every single time you invest your money? And what do I mean by win? I mean you make money. You don't lose money. Let's get, you know, compliance guys, don't choke on your fettuccine. <laughs> you guys, you can't make money every single year guaranteed. But here's the point. Investing is about probabilities. If somebody said, every time I flip a coin, um, let's see, or somebody said this, let's flip a coin, you pick heads or tails, and we're going to bet on it. And so you bet a dollar that it's going to be heads, and you lose. So you lose a dollar. Well, what do you do? There's this concept called doubling down. So you double down. You say, now I'm going to bet $2 that it's going to be heads. And they flip and it's tails and you lose. You're down three bucks. So you double down. You say, I'm going to bet four dollars. You double your two dollar bet. They flip it and it's tails again. Oh my goodness gracious, goodness, goodness gracious. We're down what? Can anybody do this complicated math? I don't know, seven bucks or something like that. You double the four, you're at eight. Double down. And lo and behold, because there's a 50 50 chance being heads or tails, it is heads. You win eight dollars. So you get back the seven you lost plus the dollar you were hoping to win, and you are up, baby. Doubling down, as long as you can afford to double it if you get into the higher numbers, doubling down always, 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 it always works if you can afford to keep betting and if you're dealing with a true 50-50 situation. That's why roulette wheels, if you've ever been in a casino, that's why roulette wheels don't only have a red and a black, you know, red or black triangles or whatever those things are. They put some green on there. One of them here, two in Europe or whatever it is. They're skewing the odds towards the house so that people can't just play the old double down game. Now, what does this have to do with investing? Yeah, I suppose you could, you know, do some double down investing or whatever. But what I want to teach is I want to teach a methodology for you to think what is the most probable thing that will happen in the stock market? Because basically, if you take all of the money managers on the planet, you take everybody who's managing money for a living, they're charging, you know, half a percent, one percent, one and a half, two and a half percent, whatever it is, hedge funds, everybody, they are charging to decide what you should purchase. I'm an investment advisor. They're making investment advisory decisions are telling you what to invest in or what to purchase because it may go which direction it may go up for the most part yes it's possible to short the market to bet against it that it will go down and you win if it does lose money but most money managers are not shorting the market for you most people aren't doing that most money managers are trying to buy things that they hope will increase in value and you pay them to gamble for you. It's not wrong. It's just underperformed all of the safer strategies. So I'm not I'm not anti-stock market, folks. I don't have anything against growth or gambling. I'm not anti-banks. I don't have anything against you know savings accounts or uh, relative safety. The reason I don't like banks is because I'm anti making less money than inflation. The only reason I you know, sound or anti-stock market, or the reason I talk badly about the stock market is because in the last 18 years, the risk has not been worth the reward and the safer strategies from insurance companies have paid more interest. Trust me, people, trust me. If insurance companies were paying 2% and the stock market was making 10, I'd be talking about the stock market. Trust me, if the stock market was losing money for the last 18 years, and insurance companies were paying half a percent, but CDs were paying 7% every year, my show would be about CDs. I don't care where the money goes. My job as an independent fiduciary, my job as an educator, my job as a good, honest, pure-hearted human, as opposed to 
uh, crook or scam artist. My job is to tell you the truth and to do unto others, to give you information that I wish I had or I would like to have when I'm investing or purchasing. What I'm teaching you on this episode is how to win every single time. Now, betting that the stock market is going to go a certain direction, the one thing we know is you can never win every time. You can't know that the stock market's going to go up next year. You can't know that it's going to go up for the next three years. You can't know that it's going to go up for 7, 10, 15, 20, or 30 years. As a matter of fact, oh my goodness, he's about to shoot the sacred cow. You can't even know that the stock market always recovers. It always comes back. Just give us your money. Let us rip you off and it's going to come back because it always does. Barf, barf, barf. People. No one can say the stock market always comes back. They can look back in history and say, you know, during times when the biggest group of people that ever lived called the baby boomers, I like to change my accents right in the middle, go from like, I don't know, ghetto to English to somewhat Australian with a lisp. Uh, you know, back in the days of the 70s and 80s and 90s, it, it, it always, it always, it, it, if it went down, it came back up. You could say that. You could say that. I guess from the 70s to 1999, I think the stock market compounded like 11 and a half percent or something like that. Go do your own research. Just go to the, you know, go to finance.yahoo.com. Finance.yahoo.com. And on the left-hand side somewhere, there'll be like a little blue S&P 500. You click on it and then you hit historical prices or historical returns, whatever. You know, go back to, you know, January 1st, 1970 and look at the score. What did this? What did the you know S and P five? What was the score? I don't have my, I don't have it pulled up right now. But let's say it was like eleven hundred or something. I, I don't know what it was. But I just this is what I do. You say what was the score for the S and P five hundred? Then you go to nineteen ninety nine, New Year's Eve. What was the score for the S and P five hundred? And then you can use a future value calculator or work with your advisor, or whatever. You can work, you can work it backwards to say, you know, to go from that number to that number. Here's how much it would have had to compound. It's like 11, 11 and a half percent, something, something awesome like that. If you do that from 2001, I'm sorry, from 2000, January 1, 2000, till now, the stock market is not growing that well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that your Edward Morgan Lynch guy gets offended when I expose their BS lies. The truth is the truth is the truth. We're just, we're looking for data. We need a windshield. We need clarity and accuracy. And these guys that lie to you to get you to keep gambling on something that hasn't been working better than the safer tools are infuriating to me. I care about you guys. I don't want someone lying to you. My my group, my flock, my flock of sheep. <laughs> I've now made two farm animal sounds in the same episode. Why not just make it a trifecta? Let's go for the pig. <laughs> That's awesome. That kind of hurt, but let's do it anyway. Folks. This is such a weird podcast. I, I think I offend eight out of 10 people that listen, but the two of you, I love you and you love me. And so let's get married and just make money forever. People, the probability thing is such a big deal. You want to bet on probabilities and you want to get probabilities on your side. You want to be the casino, not the person gambling. You want to be the casino. The house always wins. So how do we make you a house. No, don't eat a bunch of food and get to four or 500 pounds and call yourself a house. Not what I'm talking about. How do we make you the house as far as gambling is concerned so you have uh, the probabilities on your side? Well, okay, you say, Charlie, well, I can't bet that the market's going to go up. So should I bet that the market's going to go down? No, because that's still just picking one direction. If you buy the market and hope it goes up that's gambling and you don't have probabilities on your side. If you sell or short the market and hope it goes down, you don't have probabilities on your side. Building a portfolio where you have a little bit of each, same issue. If you just take whatever dollars invested wherever it is, you still don't have probabilities on your side. So what do I do to protect my clients? What do I do with my own money? Because you guys know this, I'm 46 years old, don't have a single dollar in stocks, bonds, or mutual funds because they're stupid right now. There's no reason. It's a useless tool for anybody, particularly, my goodness, particularly if you're in your 50s or 60s, you're nearing the end of your working career and can't afford losses and you have to live off of this money for the rest of your life to buy a stock, bond, or a mutual fund. Are you kidding me? All that means 
is that someone's been lying to you and hiding the truth from you and has not honestly said, um, were you guys aware that the safer places to put money with insurance companies, if this was in the 80s, I'd say banks, but right now I'm just using the current data. Uh, were you guys aware that the places you could put this money with insurance companies, which by the way are safer than your brokerage firms anyway, uh, instead of with your brokerage firms, uh, you can't lose the money. Some of them have no fees and their average since 2000 until now has been higher than the stock market. The fact that no one has told you that except me, the fact that your person that you're paying, you know, you've probably picked one person out of 7 billion people on the planet to manage your money or give you advice. The fact that they have not told you this is grounds for dismissal a hundred times over. It, I don't care if they're immoral. They're doing it on purpose. I don't care if they're ignorant and just bad at their job. They're not staying up on at their education or their study. They've gotten comfortable. They just kind of do what they do, and it's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, unless you're hurting people. I mean, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Works for like an exercise routine. You know, if you're still losing weight and you look like a rock star with like an eight pack, keep it up. You know what I mean? But if you're hurting people. Like keeping them from making money or charging them extra fees, permanently making every generation after them weaker and poorer, <laughs> less wealthy, less protected. If you're doing that for a living because you're lazy, I have kind of a problem with that. That's why I'm the financial services industry whistleblower. That's why 98% of the people that listen hate me and the 2% love me because most people can't handle truth. I feel like the firm. No, wait, not the firm. A few good men. You can't handle the truth! And Jack, whatever, gets upset and stands up and condemns himself, right? Guys, what is the most probable thing that the market's going to do in any time frame? Five, the next five minutes, the next hour, the next week, year, 10 years from now till you die. What's the most probable thing the market, think closely, you know, listen closely and think hard. What's the most probable way that the market is going to move, what direction it's going to go for the next minute, hour, week, month, year, 10 years, your lifetime? And I'm going to give you the answer that I was taught when I traded full time foreign currencies for two and a half years from midnight to 8 a.m., sometimes sleeping with my laptop because I was stuck in a trade. I didn't like that very much. Laptops aren't very sexy or cuddly. They're hot and hard. I don't like them. Peeps, if the market is going to move somewhere, the only thing we know is that how it moves in that direction, whether it's trending upwards, price is getting higher, whether it's trending downwards. I don't want to bet on either of those things. I don't want to say it's going to go up or it's going to go down. What I know for a fact, and you can test this and I can show you how to do it if you want to call me, 888-285-2268, 888-285-2268, or you can email charlie at jewettwealth.com. Charlie is C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T -T wealth.com. If you look me up on the internet, Charlie Jewett, you can find a ton of different ways to get in touch with me. Just get in touch and I'll show you. But any time frame you look at, what we know for a fact is the market is going to move in an A, B, C, D pattern. What do I mean by that? When the market is trending up, and picture in front of you, like this is not a visual medium, so I'm, I'm doing auditory only. I'm just talking to you. If you have a piece of paper, you can draw it or you can just go look online. But let's say the market's at, you know, a thousand. It's going to go up to 1200, then down to 1100, then up to 1300. And there's kind of like a Z type of a shape or a Zorro or a lightning bolt or whatever, a couple of checks. It's going to be low, high, a little bit lower, but not all the way down to that bottom low, and then higher than the high. It's going to go zig, 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 zig. It's just these little check marks going up and up and up and up, and it stair steps or lightning bolts up when the market's trending down. If you look at the one-minute chart, the 10-minute chart, the one-day chart, the one-week chart, the one-year chart, how the market moves in any direction, even laterally, okay, during what we call the lost decade from 2000 to 2010, yes, the market went 
nowhere from start to finish, but how did it get there? It went everywhere. It went all over the place in an A, B, C, D pattern is what we call it in the world of trading. Zigzagging down, zigzagging up, zigzagging sideways. Have you ever seen that heartbeat thing? You know, you have on the on the movies, you know, I don't know, some ER or some hospital show like, I don't know if he's going to make it. Things aren't looking very well. His blood pressure is 9,000 over 57 million. Oh, nurse, call it. 3.52 in the afternoon. He's dead, right? Alert the family. Guys, that heartbeat, that up and down, 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 that's how the market moves. Now, why does it move that way? Can we just stop for a moment and say, well, why doesn't the market just move in a straight line like when the person's dead? The market's not made up of dead people. The market is made up of living people operating on fear and greed and making purchasing and selling decisions, most of them making very poor decisions, except for the really best of the best, the big money that controls the market. Matter of fact, the big money that controls the market is sometimes purposefully moving the market to go stop hunting and things like that to create profits for themselves because they know what the rest of us novices do, right? Wherever the market goes, wherever any index goes, any stock price, any mutual fund, the way that it gets there, just like the way that we walk, how do we walk one foot in front of the other? I've never seen someone just go, I want to be 10 feet away, keep their legs together and go, and just sort of glide across the, the land and get 10 feet away. You have to put one foot in front of the other. So wherever you go, whether you're walking uphill or downhill, you're going to get there by putting one foot in front of the other and taking steps. Well, how does the market walk uphill? How does it walk downhill? How does it walk flat or sideways? The one foot in front of the other, the footsteps of the market, is this A, B, C, D pattern of low, higher, a little bit lower, a little bit higher, or high, low, a little bit higher than that, and then a little bit lower than the first low. It's going to A, B, C, D. If you want to just go to Google and say, a, B, C, D pattern, or how does the market move, or look at any chart, you're just going to see zigzaggies all over the place, and what I'm telling you, da, 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 da. here's the meat, here's the juice, here's the treasure. How do we make sure our clients are winning all the time? We don't bet which direction the market's going to go. What do we bet on? What do we think is the most probable thing that's going to happen in the world? I think the most probable thing that's going to happen in the market in any time frame, particularly from now until you retire or now until you die, so through your retirement, I think the most probable thing that's going to happen is that wherever the market goes, it's going to zigzag. So how do you win every single time, no matter what, you stop the losses? You say, when the market moves down, I don't care if it's over one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, whatever it is, when the market does its down moves, I don't want to lose any of my money. I want protection of principle. When the market moves up, I want to make some money and I don't need all of it. The only way to get all of the ups is to get all the downs, right? Now, there are some indexed universal life insurance strategies where you pay an extra fee, so they buy more options. And when the market goes up 10%, you actually get 130% of it. And those are absolutely freaking awesome. But ignore those for right now. Pretend I never said anything, which is too late because they already said it. Don't think about elephants right now. What are you guys thinking about? Sorry. So besides from crazy strategies and sort of creativity that uh, the, producer, or the, the makers of these products have come up with, which I love, Besides from that, if you just go with a very, very basic, simple plan, don't lose money. Stop. Risk has been optional for 30 years, and it does not pay well. Don't lose money when the market moves down. Make some of the ups, some of the gains. Pocket some of the growth when the market moves up. And how do we know it's going to move up at some point? Because everywhere the market goes... 
it goes there in a zigzag pattern. It has to move up. That's the nature of human beings selling and buying based on fear and greed is that while they're selling, it goes down. And then when they're buying or when the big money says they're, you know, that's cheap, they start buying, it drives the price back. Even one mutual fund, one mutual fund dumping enough positions of one stock will change the price of that stock just with them selling their positions or buying their positions. One single mutual fund. Forget if the entire market thinks something's cheap or, or expensive and sells or buys. So what do we want to bet on? That's going to go up or down? No, we want to bet that it's going to be volatile. Bet that wherever it goes, it's going to zigzag and you win every single time. Guys, there's never been a time. Listen, I do, I, you know this. I don't protect myself against things that have never happened. I don't have flying cow insurance. I don't have witch's wart insurance on my health policy. I don't have, like, my silverware flew out of the drawer and stabbed me in my face insurance. I don't have any insurance protecting against things that have never happened to anybody in the world. It, there's never been a time in any market on any time frame, one minute chart, five minute chart, one week, it, none where the market went singularly in one direction without zigzagging at all. Because that's not what a market is. That's not what a heartbeat does. That's not the way people walk. They walk one leg in front of the other, and that's how we make our money. Don't lose on the way down. Make some of the profits on the way up, and all your portfolio or your assets can do. Don't choke on your fettuccine compliance, guys, when I tell the truth. Because if you ask me to lie, I'm going to fight you. The only thing that can happen to a portfolio that doesn't lose and makes some money in the up years is that it stair steps up and up and up and up and up for the rest of your life. I don't know what speed it's going to go. I just know you win every single time if you stop losing. It is your choice to risk losing money and it doesn't pay well. It has not paid well for 20 years. And any liars or creeps that tell you that it does can debate me and I'll put them to shame, which is why not a single soul has stepped up in the last two and a half years to debate me on any medium. If you don't like my confidence, I'm sorry, but Michael Jordan had a right to be confident and challenge anybody one-on-one -on -one when he was the best basketball player on the planet. And as long as nobody can beat any of our financial plans or nobody can challenge me or nobody will even try to debate me, I'm going to talk like this. And as an honest, humble person, when someone does debate me and beat me, I'm going to do an episode and put them on the show, introduce you to them, learn from them and make them one of my mentors because I truly don't care about arrogance or reputation or any of that. I care about the truth and I love people that tell the truth and I really, really hate liars. To make this a little bit more clear and maybe another analogy that may be helpful is you know, look at the tides, the tides of the ocean. The ocean comes up in high tide, it goes down in low tide. It comes up in high tide, it goes down in low tide. And frankly, if I could bet on the ocean instead of the stock market, I would definitely choose the ocean because it's much more predictable. I mean, it does the high tide and the low time thing, tide thing over and over and over again. So if the stock market worked like this, every morning was low tide, stocks are cheap. Every night's high tide, stocks are expensive. I just buy in the morning, sell at night. Buy in the morning, sell at night. But the stock market doesn't work like the ocean. It doesn't have those tides that are predictable. It has tides. It goes up and down for sure, but it does it on its own schedule. And sometimes it takes years off before really going down. I think we're in the longest bull run of, of all time right now. So we're, it's a good example. We're waiting for it to drop, although it's been dropping recently. But what I would want to bet on, if we use the ocean as our analogy, what I want to bet on are that they're going to be waves as the high tide comes in and that there are going to be waves as the high tide, I'm sorry, as the low tide, or as the tide goes out and becomes low tide, right? Bet on the waves, not how far the high tide's going to go or how low the low tide's going to go, because the stock market's much less predictable than even the ocean. Just say, I don't know where it's going or what time it's going to get there or how far it's going to be there. I just want to bet that on the way there, there's going to be some waves. Well, the waves in the stock market 
are the ups and downs. If you protect the principal, if you just stop losing money, folks, what is so attractive about losing money? I don't even get this. Stop losing money. Use the strategies we teach, index strategies, and it's not the only thing we teach. If you go back, you know, 40 years, 50 years, you could retire and put money in the bank and make 8, 9, 10%, whatever. I mean, there's literally grandparents and great-grandparents who've taught their kids just put your money in the bank and live off the interest. Because at that time, it worked. And at that time, if an advisor hid that from you and said, no, you need to put your money in the stock market and risk it all to try to make 6%, that would be criminal activity because he didn't need to take that risk. Well, why do we have this whole thing now that used to work and doesn't called diversified portfolios and asset allocation and spread it all around and everything should work out there, joker? Why do we have that blah, blah, bar, bar, bar? It's because the banks stopped paying that much on CDs. Between the three choices, banks, market, and insurance companies, the banks used to be the best. And then they stopped being the best. Things change. And you have to change with the times. So this whole asset allocation and diversified portfolio and spread it around stocks, bonds, and mutual funds was the industry's answer to you can't just stick it in the bank and make money anymore. And guess what? That answer... That solution had a time where if you said, should I put it in the bank or in insurance company products or the market, the market was the answer. It was you, you, for the risk, you were making more reward. If an advisor came along and said, nah, don't put your money in the market. You're not going to make anything there. Let's, let's, use, let's use annuities at 3%, 4%, whatever. If they stuck you in annuities when you could really afford the risk and had the time, that would be criminal behavior. I'm not an annuity guy. I'm not, I'm not a life insurance guy. I'm an investment advisor, licensed, fully licensed, duly licensed, insurance licensed, and Series 65. I'm telling you, somebody who lies to you and hides the truth from you is a criminal. If today, like so many of the people in the financial services industry, if today someone hides from you that annuities and life insurance have crushed the stock market in the last 18 years and tells you to pay a fee and risk the loss of your money by using stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, they are a criminal. Guys, it's a joke. It's criminal behavior for someone not to tell you which of the three different choices are winning or doing better over the last two decades is it the bank is it the stock market is it insurance products i'm telling you i'm sure there are more honest people out there in the world besides me i just don't bump into them very often because i'm always dealing with that what, with whatever joker uh is advise is is managing the money before the person comes into our company and we're seeing hundreds of these and it's it's pathetic people for the last 18 years insurance company products are doing a better job at not just protecting the assets, not just providing death benefit, the normal stuff that they used to do. They're doing a better job at growing and compounding the money than the stock market or risky strategies. Please just understand, I will change my advice when that stops being true. If risking money in the stock market starts to pay 11, 12, 13% and the insurance companies are only paying five or six. I will start to talk about how risk, more risk, more reward works. And you want to have some of your portfolio at risk. Right now, I would be committing malpractice if I didn't tell you that there's no place in your life whatsoever for a stock, a bond, or a mutual fund until you know 100% that you can take an increasing paycheck for the rest of your life that pays all your bills, keeps up with inflation, and you can never, ever, ever possibly run out of money. If you're risking any dollar that you need in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, it's because someone has lied to you and misled you. Stop betting on what direction the market's going to go, particularly stop betting that it's going to go up at the top of the high, you know, longest bull run in history. Start to bet that wherever it goes, it's going to go there in an up and down pattern. It's going to zigzag. Stop betting on the high tide. Bet that there will be waves as it goes up in the high tide, down in the low tide. Other than that, I don't have any strong opinions on the subjects, folks. 
Get in touch, 888-285-2268, 888-285-2268. My name is Charlie Jewett. My team will help you get you to and through retirement. Why do we do that? Because we think you people are the best. Email us, charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I-E, at J-E-W-E-T-T, wealth.com. Charlie at jewettwealth.com. Signing off. See ya. That's all, folks.